What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. Now, I actually thought the swap.com was the worst store I've ever reviewed, but today I have one that's actually much worse, that spent $300 million. Their store gets one sale for every 11,000 items listed. So imagine you had 11,000 items listed and you weren't even getting one sale a day. That's that store. We're gonna compare that though in today's video with a store that just started. It's an everything store and it does really well. So I'm gonna compare a store that has been around for a long time that raised $300 million and doing everything wrong and compare that with a beginner who's doing everything right and also has an everything store, which a lot of people start with an everything store. They're doing just fine. So I'm gonna compare both those stores in today's video and hopefully you get an idea of what you can do in your store to improve your performance. So again, smash the like button, consider subscribing. Let's get the review. All right, guys, in this store, we're going to compare David to Goliath. So we have a store with 3.5 million listings. This is straight up and we're going to compare it to the little guy. Um, this store just started. This is Michael. He just joined the group. He has 628 listings. He's been selling for about three months. So he had no previous selling experience. So this is the little guy. We're going to compare this store with this gigantic store, which raised $300 million on Crunchbase. It's pretty insane. They have a thousand employees. They are local and as i was saying before they have the worst sell through rate of any store i've ever seen which means for every 11,000 items they have listed they sell one item per day they barely outsell my colleague tech and sports and we run a facebook group together at patreon.com slash the resource podcast inside that group we go over about 10 different things that you can do to optimize your store and i'm going to go over those in this video so you can get an idea of what we do different and why this store even though it's tiny and they just started is outperforming this gigantic store with three and a half million store or three and a half million items and this little store is more profitable they have less returns they have a better sell through rate and this is the best part it's an everything store so a lot of people when they're just getting started it's not realistic to focus in on one niche so i'm actually going to be reviewing another store later that's this store am fashion this store is a little bit further ahead in the beginner store because they've decided that they just want to sell clothing and it's also a really successful store in the uk which a lot of people have been asking so let's get back to this big store so thread up number one one of the reasons why their sell through rate is so bad is they consign every single conceivable brand and they even say on their website you can send in all the bad items. Now you tell me in the comment section below if you think this is ethical or a little bit shady. Some people said slimy in the early call, but I'm not sure it's slimy, it's technically legal, but what happens is they say send everything to us and they let you know, okay, these items are not of quality to consign. So do you want to donate them? Do you want to get rid of them or discard them? And I think they end up listing those items anyway, even if a customer says donate it. And the reason is because the profit margin on these items is probably so low that they can't give the customer um, any money for it. So as an example, you can see here, I just pulled up their store. The first three listings or the first four out of five are Old Navy. Old Navy is traditionally a terrible resale brand. We're gonna click here and before we even click in, you can see they're not top rated seller. They don't qualify for top rated plus. They don't have any promotions. The one thing that we have here that we do recommend in the group is free returns, um, but they charge for shipping. I'm sorry, they have free, free shipping, which I totally do not recommend unless you like losing money. So people will say that $13.99 is the same as $9.99 plus $4 in shipping, but we've done all the testing in the group and it's just not true. Unless you sell brand new items, you don't need free shipping. And also, I used to do this. In this beginning page, you'll see that they all have white background versus the, the, the person that just started is using a gray background right from the get-go. And you can tell, which pictures do you like more? This brand new store that just started with the gray background or this $300 million store with these pure white backgrounds. In my opinion, the brand new store, the pictures are, are better. They're more accurate for what the customer is looking for and that makes a big difference. So back to this big store, we're gonna click on one of these listings. We can scroll through here and see they do have a, a, an aggressive markdown, but this is where I'm trying to let people know that if you mark it down but have it priced too high to begin with, it's still not gonna sell. So this item is listed at $13.99 free shipping, but this blouse or this top at Old Navy is probably under $10. So they're selling this pre-owned top 
for more than the actual store, which is way too high. This is priced way above market. And ThreadUp has over 100,000 items in their store that are just Old Navy and Forever 21. Those are terrible brands that they should have just donated. So I don't agree with them listing each item. It costs about two item, $2 per item to list. So they spent $200,000 alone just on listing Old Navy and Forever 21 at a price where they'll never sell. So it's essentially a professional storage company. Like we put in one of our podcasts, like if you price your items too high and only pick bad brands, you're not gonna have any success. So let's go back to this listing again. So we recommend free returns, which they have. Um, when I was on eBay, I did 60 day returns and we actually recommend that on the group, but 30 day returns is still fine and you still qualify for top rated plus. You need fast handling. And so this says free standard shipping. So if I click on this, it's probably gonna go over first class mail. So it says standard delivery, FedEx ground or FedEx home delivery. That's gonna cost more money than using the post office. So they're actually paying more than $6 to ship this item, which I find that's um, very expensive. So a lot of people think that these large stores have aggressive shipping discounts and they do, but not to the point where this is like one or two dollars to ship. The maximum USPS discount that I've seen is like one dollar per item. So very difficult unless you're selling thousands and thousands of packages. And from what I see, this store only has 300 sales a day. So 300 sales a day for three and a half million listed is horrible. So back down here to the item specifics, we always review these to see how um, people list their items. So I can see here in the item specifics, a few of them are incorrect. They have a length and a chest um, listed and they're using decimal points, which is not part of the drop down menu on eBay. So a lot of these item specifics don't count. They're not ranking in the eBay algorithm. And right here they put, they make the mistake of adding in does not apply and no fabric content. So that's not true. This item does have an MPN. So if you don't know what it is, you, you would leave it blank because if you put in does not apply, nobody actually searches for does not apply and it'll put you in this weird ranking system that's not part of what people are selecting. On the right, it says no fabric content as the material, which is not true. This is probably cotton. So um, you can just make up item specifics if you want, but if you do that, your items will rank a lot lower and these rank really poorly. In fact, if you guys are looking for this item, you probably won't find it unless eBay thinks that since I was just looking at it, that it's popular and, it, and then it will serve it to more customers. But organically, no one is going to search for Old Navy Double XL on a, a t-shirt and be okay with a $13.99 price. Actually, we're going to just try this. Old Navy xxl t-shirt and we're going to search in the women's category so what ebay is going to serve to me as you can see here the, these top four listings are promoted listings and below that you can see how much lower the prices are 8 11 11 90 12 this is just what ebay is recommending and if we go to the left side here and you can see here this one right here only showed up because i just clicked on it so eBay thinks that maybe this is something that I want. So they put it back into the running here. But this one is, it's priced okay. But in my opinion, if you want Old Navy to sell, you're going to have to price it much more aggressively. So we can see here there's 1700 results for Old Navy Double XL. If I come down here and click on sold. 819, which is actually pretty good. So Old Navy does have a pretty decent sell through rate, especially in the size double XL. But if you look here at the prices, a lot of the prices are under $10. Here's one, the most recent one, $3.90 plus 625. So interesting looking at the different price points. Uh, I think $13.99 free shipping is too high for that if you want it to move quickly. If you like storing your items and keeping them for a long time, you can price it really high. So you can also click here on the, the pricing to get an idea of where the items mostly sell. So you can see here, the majority of the items are around $10 and less. So you can basically move the slider on the bottom part of this chart to get an idea of what sells well. But the main reason why this store is so poor is because they're not using any of the nine promotions. So they don't have a coupon. They don't have a, a actually they use one of them. They use the markdown sale. Um, they don't have a combined shipping discount. So you can't do that if you offer free shipping. 
You can't let a customer earn a combined shipping discount. Like if you buy two or more items, then we give you a discount. So a customer might be more likely to buy more than one item. Um, also, if you look at their feedback, they don't do a good job of taking care of their customers. They have 786 negative feedback in the last 12 months. So you may think, you know what, they're a big store. Um, maybe that is a reasonable amount, but I want to give you guys another example. Here is Greg Morris cards. This is a fully optimized large store. We're gonna click on this because, you know, I like to make fun of these large stores that have negative feedback, but this store has 26,000 feedback in the last 30 days, which means they have around 3,000 sales a day. So this store is 10 times bigger and it's, it's just a little guy. The guy's name is Greg Morris. And if you look at his, he doesn't even have a profile picture. So people are saying, you know what? I'm so worried about my social media. Does social media matter? This, have you heard of Greg Morris? No Instagram, no Facebook, no social media, no picture. And he sells 3,000 items a day. Let's look at his store. Nothing fancy. There's not even a banner. He does have a little logo right here, but he has sold 5.6 million items on eBay. And if you look at his feedback, he has zero negative feedback in the last year. That's unbelievable. That means he goes above and beyond to take care of every single customer. And that's really, really important if you want to scale. Plus, Greg Morse Cards has been doing it for 20 years. So please be patient. And a lot of times these big guys come in with VC money, venture capital money, and they try to take over the world with these crazy stores, but they don't take care of their customers. And when you do this poor of a job, like over 1% negative feedback, that means you're doing something wrong because a lot of people don't leave feedback at all even if they have a bad experience. So this is 1% of customers complaining on here, which is tremendously bad. So I wanna compare this big store with this little store that's just started, just joined the group. I think this is a very, very cool store because if you want your items to sell, number one is try to pick cool items. And this store right here, you can see, it's a bunch of collectibles, a bunch of nostalgia. They're an everything store because they just started, but their sell-through rate is excellent. So let's look at their store. I click here on this Garfield, which I think is really cool. They only have 223 feedback. They just started. So they did get a couple of negative feedback when they first started, which are, these are just common mistakes. They, um, this lens listed as functional, but it was broken when they received it. And they accidentally didn't mark enough postage when they shipped an item and the customer was charged an additional fee. Completely reasonable beginner mistakes. If you responded back to this customer and said, I'm very sorry about that. Let me reimburse you for the additional post that you probably could have gotten this negative one revised. And on this lens, if you had put free returns and the item was sent back, this negative feedback would have been removed automatically. And most likely somebody that um, received a broken camera lens would be willing to return it, right? Or at least discard it. And if you give them a refund and they open a return, that negative feedback would fall off. So you could have, so this neat beginner could have solved both of those problems, but 56 feedback in the last month is really good. That means that this store probably had at least five sales a day with 659 listed. I would guess in the last 30 days, this store sold 150 items based on the, let's look at the solds here. So 307 in the last 90 days, but the bulk of the sales happened just recently. So let's look back here. Today so far they've sold one, one, two, two yesterday, one the day before, four, four the day before. And you can see this is the classic everything store. Golf club cover, shoes, camera, video game, Funko Pop, blank media, vintage 90s Nike shorts, Orvis shirt. So one thing I do like because this is kind of a copy of my colleague Tekken Sports. But if, because of the, the pricing, let's take a look at it in a moment. Um, right here, you can see this is priced at 1888, which is the price point that my colleague uses. But I like that he changed the description. So instead of just straight copying, he actually went in here and was original and made his own description, which I feel like is very good uh, because it's sort of the information that people would need. It's single stitch, any defects will be shown. Um, the, there's, the top sentence here of dry rot tested is not necessary on a white t-shirt because dry rot only happens on black t-shirts, but did pretty decent. And I think that having all the pictures and the ruler, let's see, 
yeah, the ruler in the photos to show the measurements is very good. So this is a very, very good listing, especially for a beginner. No random stuff in here that doesn't matter. No crazy legalese. Just a simple description. And if I look here, it looks like the um, this is wrong for the character. Um, short sleeve length. The brand is incorrect. So there are still some mistakes here because... Let me see if they have a picture of the tag. Oh, here it is. So this brand is Go For The Gold Medallion. And they could also put Made In USA or USA in the title. Um, they could also put L in the title, the research for large, but I like how they did both. They have large in the title and they have L down here in the item specifics. Um, but this is the wrong brand. So another common beginner mistake is not having the item specifics correct. But because they are utilizing some of the different things that we talk about, um, they're a lot more successful. Free returns that are 60 days, reasonable shipping, priced well. But the main difference between these two stores is Thumbprint Co. Michael, he actually spent a lot of time sourcing. So you can tell by the goods that the majority of these items are cool. They're not Old Navy and they're not basic brands. They're like interesting things that he has found probably garage selling. He probably ran into a garage or a Garfield collector because there's a lot of cool Garfield stuff. In here like this shirt for $45 is a great deal um, I really like this I think that it's very cool and taking pictures against a, a gray background honestly I think this picture is better than the, the 300 million dollar store because it's accurate um, shows them made in USA now the thing is I don't think this shirt is new it says new without tags never washed I I don't know about that this would be a shirt that you do want to dry rot test if it is new Maybe it is new without tags, but I think this this little thing right here is not the new without tag. I think it's from the thrift store, to be honest. I don't think this shirt's brand new. Um, might be, though. So I would put, like, used, and I'd put excellent condition. I don't know if I would do that. So here, it does say dry rot tested, which is good. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly where you should dry rot test, but I think somewhere that's not visible on the front so that you don't ruin the shirt um, when you're testing if it will will tear apart because um, if you don't wash a shirt um, it usually has dry rot if it's black or and and of a certain age and not stored under certain conditions so looking at the store 628 you would aim for six sales a day it would be one percent sell through rate but in my opinion anything over three sales a day would be a good place to be because is, is let's say you're listing five a day and you're selling three a day, you have enough capital to continue growing your store. So if you are just starting, just like Michael, and you have your store going, you want to have best offer on, you want to do the best pictures you can, you want to find the coolest stuff for your store. And let's look at the newly listed here. Michael sells everything, shoes, t-shirts. Um, here is a sheet of stickers. And I think that um, Michael's done a really good job here of having a really cool background. I personally love the contrast background where you have two different colors for people to see. And I love it. This is a very, very, very good beginner store. You wouldn't have expected this seller to only have sold for a couple of months, but you do get a lot of insight in our group for presenting items well. And to be honest, this store is not even fully optimized. Um, they're not top rated yet, so they don't have the uh, icon in the back. Um, their shipping is reasonable, but they don't have uh, a public coupon. They're probably not using newsletters. So this store could very easily become a 1% sell-through store because really their product mix is excellent. Collectibles, cool stuff, cool shirts. Um, right down here, this Pebble Beach shirt is a terrible brand. It's too common. So I guess people kind of um, poo-poo the way that I I get rid of common items, but I'll take literally any offer. If somebody offered me $5 plus shipping on this shirt, I would take it. Just because they're, they're so common. If I had something a little bit cooler, like this Oakley shirt, maybe I would wait for $10 plus shipping, but on a shirt like Pebble Beach, where there, there's a literally 100 at every single thrift store, and some people are getting them for free or $1, uh, I'm taking the money and I'm moving on to the next item. Something is more rare, like this vintage um, Jeff Gordon hat, I would wait a little bit longer to, to, to accept an offer, but I love this store because it's a true representation of what people do when they're just starting. So 
If you don't take your time and really learn how eBay works, you're not going to have success. Almost every single store review that I have, I received over 300 requests for um, store reviews from the last couple of videos. And what I'm trying to do is review people who really put the time in. I get a lot of emails saying, um, I don't get very many sales. I don't have very good items. What can I do to improve sales? That's a really low effort. Like if you're not finding good items and you don't want to learn how to list well on eBay and learn how to price accurately, you're never going to get any sales. I need to find this an example. I haven't seen one yet of somebody who has optimized average listings. Um, I haven't had an email coming in saying, Chris, I can't find good items or I don't know what good items are. So I basically list what I find very competitively and I'm doing well because I haven't really seen that. Like if you have only the ability to source Old, old Navy, we just looked at the Old Navy double XL women's top, which is common. Anybody right now can go to the thrift store and find a double XL Old Navy top. But do you want a fast sell through with that? You probably could achieve that because 800 of those sell every single month. That's actually amazing. Tons and like multiple of that item sells every single day. If you priced an old navy top at five dollars plus shipping it's probably profitable that's something that even the thrift store would just get rid of you can get that from your neighbor at a garage sale for definitely 50 cents to a dollar so if you want to get into the clothing niche and you optimize it you can sell old navy for five plus shipping it's way under market so people would definitely be more able to buy that than pricing exactly at the market what a lot of people will do is they'll look at a company like thread up They'll go to their items and they'll say, okay, this, um, so this is interesting. Maybe um, the Google algorithm was listening to me saying that I don't like Old Navy because now eBay has presented a whole new set of items. Pink Rose, Silence and Noise, Rogues, Pam and Gala. Also four brands I think are just average. Silence and Noise is a little bit better because I think it's an anthropology brand. So it's funny, this item, which is an anthropology brand where everything is really expensive, is listed at $12.99. It's less money than the Old Navy. Like, I find that amazing. Really great brand, priced less than the lowest clothing brand at the mall. So maybe they have an algorithm inside that's really smart, and they know that since this shirt is size small, they've priced it a dollar cheaper because less people are size small than size double XL. Maybe their algorithm that's really fancy and costs millions of dollars knows that, but they still have the worst sell through rate I've ever seen. One per 11,000 is really bad. Imagine the equivalent of that would be if um, Mike wanted the same sell through rate, listing five a day, it would take him seven years to get his first sale. That, that's the equivalent of how bad that store is. Imagine you don't get any sales for seven years. Would you guys still sell on eBay if you didn't even get one sale per year? Because that's what ThreadUp is in. So it's amazing because the last time I checked their store, they had two million items in their store. So they're listing like crazy. Please do not follow that advice of listing as much as possible. Only list as much as you are selling by twice. So if you're selling one item a day, list two. Don't exceed that and you'll never get into trouble. So I think a lot of people have a huge overbuying problem. Think about how easy it is to go to a thrift store and buy 10 items and not list any. That's very, very easy. So there's a lot of different ways to do eBay, but if you take your time and really start looking at how eBay works, you're gonna do really well. So Thumbprint Co. is Michael. Check out a store, maybe buy a few things because they're kind of cool. One thing that I really, really think is to his success is that his background is an engineer. And I personally find that engineers and accountants do really well on eBay, but people who are great at buying, people who are in marketing, people who are in social media, people who are in the social sciences don't do as well because they don't get into the granular nature of how eBay works. eBay is mechanical, it's a machine. So if you're in there tinkering, almost like a mechanic, would do a better job at eBay than somebody in marketing. Marketing is beautiful pictures, models, lifestyle. That's not related to how eBay works. eBay is mechanical. So I would say that the, the occupations that do the best on eBay from my experience have been truck drivers, engineers, and accountants. And maybe when you're a truck driver and you're thinking about, I'm going from place A to B and you're calculating What's the best route to get there? Traffic conditions, when to take a break, when not to take a break, best times to drive. You're optimizing your route. Maybe that's more related than 
what picture looks the best because you'll see stores that are beautiful, amazing staged items, but the price is too high, title is wrong, um, photos are not accurate, item specifics are incorrect, they don't have any returns, they don't respond to best offer, bad customer service, ships slowly. So it's interesting, right? Because maybe reselling on eBay is a personality trait. Um, as I've become more mature at reselling, I care less and less about the items. So for me personally, I think Old Navy is great. After looking at millions of pieces of clothing, I think Old Navy per dollar is the best value of pretty much any kind of clothing. Old Navy Active, I would say is the best value. And apparently it still sells on eBay. If you're a size extra larger double XL, you could buy the shirt on eBay for $5, wear it for 10 years and sell it back on eBay for $5. You didn't even lose any money. So it's interesting looking at the different brands, but I would focus on only using profits to put back into the business. Make sure you're selling at least half of what you're listing. So this is a five a day listing store selling three to five a day. It's almost three star Nirvana and it actually it might be reseller nirvana in the future if they just add all the things that we just talked about and what we talked about in the group. So appreciate you guys. Until next time, make progress daily.